Welcome back aliens, my name is Navin Twenty, and let's continue with this series on Python. Now till this point we have talked about, oops concept, we have talked about the fundamentals of Python. Now let's go towards some negative stuff which are errors. Of course, right, no one likes error. But then if you talk about this error, we have three types of errors in general. The first one is compile time error. The second one is a logical error. And the third one is a runtime error. Now what it means? Now let's say if you write a code and that code has multiple statements and in one of the statement you have a syntax error. Let's say if you're working with if and then you forgot the colon there. If you are using print with the wrong spelling. So if you make those type of mistakes, those are syntactical errors, right? And you can call them as compile time errors because you will be getting those errors at compile time. The next set of errors is logical errors. Now what is logical? Uh, so let's say your code is working, so there's nothing wrong with the syntax, everything is working. But then when a user says, hey, I want to add two numbers, two plus three, and the answer for two plus three is five, right? But let's say if a user is getting four. So when you say two plus three, if the answer is four, that's a logical error. So in logical error, your code gets compiled, your code also gives you the output. But the problem is it will not be a correct output and that's logical error. The third one we have is runtime error. So in runtime error, your code gets compiled. Nothing wrong with that. There is no syntactical error. Your code is not actually giving you a logical error as well. Everything is working. Okay, so when a user says two plus two, it is giving you four. Sometimes, you know, if a user might give you a wrong input. Example, let's say if you're trying to divide two numbers, five divided by six. Okay, so both the values are coming from a user. Right? So you are trying to divide two numbers which are given by the user. If a user says 6 and 2, it works, right? It will give you 3. If a user says 10 and 5, you know, it is 2 again. But then what if a user says 6 and 0? You cannot divide a number by 0, right? And that's where it will give you an error. Now, this is not a compile time error because the code is getting compiled properly. This is not a logical error because for normal execution, it works. It is not working for specific input. It's not working for, I mean, your code was working somewhere between you're getting error and that's your runtime error because you are getting error at runtime. Now out of this, which is the most easiest error to find? The compile time, right? Because at the compile time itself, at the developer level, at the developer side itself, you're getting errors. Logical errors are, again, easy to handle because as a developer, we also test the application, right? Or we have a specific testing team for that. So we do test the software for different bugs. So logical errors normally comes under bugs as well. What about runtime error? Because see, runtime error, the mistake is not done by you. The mistake is done by the user right so if you are saying hey user enter two values and in your mind you have that a user will not enter a zero value for the second one but user is doing that maybe the, the application is using certain file from a c drive uh, so it was working from last seven days and today morning user has deleted that file and now if you open the application it will give you error because it's not able to find the file right so all these things comes under runtime error. So you might be thinking that's okay, right? That's a user issue. User is not able to handle the software properly. See, first of all, as a developer, you have to take care of all those things. You have to also understand what mistakes a user can do. Maybe not exactly a user, but maybe there might be issue with the database connection. There might be issue with the network connection. So if you're using an application which interacts with the server and maybe there's no internet, then what will happen? Your software should not get stopped. The moment you get runtime, error your execution stops and that's an issue banking software so let's say we have millions of transactions on the server and there's only one runtime error because of which your software will stop working and you will lose billions of dollars so the important point is even if you are getting the exception even if you are getting the error your execution should not stop. That's our main logic here. So let me show you in the example here. What I will do is I will try to use two variables here. I will say A is equal to five and B is equal to two. And of course, if we divide these two numbers, it will work. Let's try. So I will say print A divided by B. Now in this code, if you can see, we have three statements, right? We have line number three, which is statement one, line number four, which is statement two, line number six is statement three. Now out of these three statements, you can divide a statement into two parts. One is normal statement and then we have critical statement. Normal statement means which will not give you error. Example, when you say A equal to 5, there's no problem with that. When you say B equal to 2, there's no problem with that, right? Even in future, if you want to change the value from 5 to something else, it will not give you error. What's with the line number 6? So what will happen with line number 6? It will execute for this code. Let me try it. So I will right click here. I will say run. 
and you can see it works you got the output which is 2.5 and let's say after doing this let me also print a statement which is buy so that means after printing the value i'm printing buy as well and now if you run this code you can see we are getting the output and then we are getting buy as well now what if if i change the value of b to zero See, of course, we know that this is not possible. You're going to divide the number by zero. The moment you do that, you will get an error. And of course, the error, it says there was a trace back and then it was line number six. Okay, that's right. Line number six, we got the error. It will also print the statement, which is giving you the error. And it also shows what error it is. And it is zero division error. So this is your message. Division by zero, not possible, right? So how do we solve this? So there are two problems here. The first one is user will not understand what this error means, right? Second problem is you can see we are not getting buy in the output. So in the output, there's no buy. That means your execution is getting stopped in between. We don't want that. So if you want to solve this problem, we have to use a special block. See, at this line of code, we are getting exception, right? We are getting error. So what you can do is, Whatever block you have, you just need to put that in a try block or in a try statement. So we have a special thing called as try. So what we are saying, hey, this line of code, this is a critical statement. I'm not sure if this code will work or not. So try to execute that. Okay, so try to execute. So your Python will say, okay, since you are writing this in a try block, I will try to execute. But what if there's an error? Then you will say, oh, okay, if there's an error, it's very simple. I will accept the error, okay? I will handle it as a programmer. And the way you do that is by writing exception. So you have to say accept, exception. Now it is exception, so the moment you get an error this line, this will give you the error, and this is where you will handle it. Now, what type of handling we want here? Again, you can do anything you want, example. So if you know that it is because of A divided by B, you can simply say, hey, you cannot divide a number by zero. And trust me, this message is much better than the error which we are showing before, right? So now if a user is giving you the value which is zero for the second value, you will print a message by saying, hey, you cannot divide a number by zero. You can print any message you want. In fact, you can not just print a message, you can do whatever things you need. Example, if you want to perform some operation here, you can do that. Example, if you want to multiply two numbers, you want to add two numbers, you can perform different operations here as well. We don't want that. Let's keep it simple. So in the except block, you will print the message. And now let's run this code and you can see it works. You can see we got, hey, you cannot divide a number by zero and it's printing by as well. So this works, right? So what we are doing is we are trying to execute this statement. If this works, we'll print it. Otherwise, we will print the except block. Okay, that works. What if, if I change the value to two again? Will it print, hey, you cannot divide by zero? Okay, let's go with the flow now. So what will happen? You got the values which is 5 and 2. You're saying, hey, try to divide these two numbers. You're saying 5 divided by 2. There's no error, okay? There's no error. The moment you don't have any error, it will jump out of the block. And I mean, it will continue the block, first of all. It will not execute the except block because except block will execute only when you have an error. Okay, that's why you can see if I run this code, we will not be getting any error as number by zero, okay? But what if you want to print the message error as well? What if you want to print what is the error? So what you can do is here you can say exception as E so that you can represent that exception object in some way. So this E is just a representation or the object of exception. And here I will try to print E as well just to see what is happening inside E. And I will go back to my value to zero. Let's run this code and you can see it is printing the message, the message which we have, plus it is also printing the exception message, which is division by zero. Okay, so that's how it works. That's how you can handle exception. I have one more thing to talk about. Let's say I'm not printing by here. What if I have a special thing? I'm opening a file example. You know, it is always a good practice when you work with files, when you open a file, you should be closing that file. If you open a database connection, you should be closing that connection before exiting, okay? That's what we do, right? So every time you open a fridge to take out a bottle, you make sure that you close it. Now, even if you get the exception, let's say if you're opening a fridge and somebody is calling you now, you will make sure that you close the fridge, right? You don't leave the fridge open and go somewhere, right? So that means whenever you open a resource, always close it. Hold on. Let's say if I open a resource inside a try block. So let's say if I'm opening a file here, if I'm opening a database connection here, where should we close it? 
Should I close the resource inside try? I can print a message again. The message is not important. What is important is we are writing to some statements so that we can close the resource. Since we don't have a resource as of now, I will simply go with print statement. So here I will say resource open. See that this resource can be anything, okay? This can be a file, this can be a database, okay? And here I will say resource closed, okay? This works. If you have a different input like five and two, this should work. You can see it says resource open, you got the output and it says resource closed. But what if you get the exception? Now in this case, when you run this code, we have resource open, that works. It is printing the message, but can you see that? We don't have resource closed. What went wrong? The thing is, the moment you get the exception, at this line you are getting an exception, right? It is jumping outside the statement. It is jumping outside try is going to accept block. So that means instead of typing it here, we should be doing that inside the exception. Something like this, okay? So you should be closing the resource inside the except block. So if you run this code, it works. You can see that we are saying resource open. There was the exception, but we are saying resource close. But now, what if I change the value from zero to two? In this case, if you concentrate, you can see it is not saying resource close because you will not be executing the except block if you don't have the error. Oh, so we have a problem. So should I put resource close both the side in try and accept as well? Uh, we don't have to because Python provides you one more feature which is called finally. Notice finally means you can put your statements in finally. So finally simply means it doesn't matter if you are getting the exception or not, I will get execute. So if you got the exception, don't worry, I will execute myself. Even if you don't get the exception, that's fine, I will execute. So accept block will be executed only when there's an error. Finally, we get executed, doesn't matter if you're getting the exception or not. Beauty, right? And that's how you work with try, accept, and finally. So point to remember, when you work on a statement, your statements might give you some exceptions, so try to handle them with the help of try, accept, and finally. In fact, we can do one more thing here. What if, if I take a value from the user, and let's say we have a variable k, and the value from the user I'm taking with the help of input, and the type of input I want is of course integer. So I will say enter a number. And then to, to convert that into integer, we will be using int function, right? And then maybe I want to print the value of k, that's it. Nothing much. The moment you run this code, you can see it says resource open. And now we also got the output, which is 2.5, which is waiting for a number. I will enter a number, which is six. Everything works, there's no error. We got number six as it is, because we're taking it. And then we are saying resource close. Let me change the value. Let me change the value from, uh, let's say P. Now there's an issue, right? We are saying enter number, then we are saying P. Oh, we got an error. It says you cannot divide a number by zero. Oh, that's weird. We're not dividing by zero. And then it says invalid literal because this is a message which is printed by E, if you remember. The E is printing it, right? It says invalid literal for int with base 10. Oh, that's weird. What if I put that outside the try? I just want to see what type of error it throws. Because see, when you say divided by zero, it says zero division error, remember? Uh, here, if I print this, I just want to see what errors it gives you. If I say P, and you can see the error name is value error. So for different type of errors, we have a different names as well. And the general one is exception. So exception will be on top. So even if you say zero division error, it's a part of exception. Value error is a part of exception. So exception can handle everything. But you can be specific. What you can say, hey, I want to say you cannot divide a number by zero when there is a zero division error. So only when there's an error of zero division error, you'll print this. Example, you know, uh, when we are sick, when you're not feeling well, you will go to a particular doctor. Example, if, if you have something wrong with your, let's say, nose, you will go to ENT doctor. If, if there's something wrong with your, let's say, skin, you will go to a skin doctor. If there's something wrong with your teeth, you will go to a dentist, right? Same way, for different type of errors, we have different type of accept block. So you will say accept, and this time you will go for value error, and you will say again, as E doesn't matter, E is just a name of the object, okay? You can have any name, doesn't, doesn't matter there. And you can print invalid input, that's it, just a different message. But what if there's an error which you don't know? Example, you are trying to handle zero division error, you're trying to handle value error. What if there's an error which you don't know about? In that case, at the end, to be on safe side, you have accept and you will say exception. 
Now this exception will try to handle all the other errors which are not zero division and value error. It's something like we have dentist, we have gynecologist, we have skin doctor and then we have a general doctor who can handle everything. The same way this exception can handle all the exceptions. And here you can print something went wrong. Yeah, that's it. You can print the message you want. And now if you run this code with a different value, of course, if I say P now, you can see, oh, we got an error. We still got an error because I forgot one thing. I'm still doing this outside try. We should be doing that inside try, if you remember. And now let's run this code. Let's say entire value, which is P. Can you see that it says invalid input? So for different type of errors, you have to use different except block. See, if you're doing this for the first time, it will take time, okay? So it takes time. So do practice with try and accept. Now, if you're coming from Java background, we do have this concept in Java as well, right? As try, catch, and finally, the same thing. So I hope you enjoyed this session. If you have learned something, do click the like button there and do subscribe for further videos. And most important, do share this video with your friends. It might be helpful for them. So that's everyone. Bye-bye.